Now we saw in the last section how we could uh, keep Z add on and press Alt to push in. Let's switch to the standard brush. Press Alt to push in, Shift to smooth the model, and that that would help create uh, some forms. So we can press Alt, smooth things out. We can press Alt in here, pull this out. But at a certain point, we notice that um, the geometry just becomes very difficult to work with. It's uh, nearly impossible. We just can't get the form that we want because the polygons are stretching. Each one of these polygon faces just becomes way too uh, stretched and pulled. You really see it in the lips. Now if I turn frame on, you can see there's really just not enough geometry for me to put information that I want. If I want a nice crisp edge right here, well, there's not enough geometry to do that. So what I have to do at that point is I have to divide my model. I have to add geometry to it. I do that by going into the Geometry tab and press Divide right here. So these, this whole section over here of the Geometry tab is a very important, very core uh, function. So you divide the model right there. But when you divide it, you also add levels of resolution. And so levels of resolution allow you to work with less polygons or work with more. So let's divide that. And you can see it looks smoother, less faceted, and I've added from three to a fourth subdivision level. I can continue to sculpt at the third subdivision level if I want, which is very useful or I can keep going up. What you want to avoid doing is just pressing divide, 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 divide. Because if you do that, then you will be um, setting yourself up for a very difficult situation. You're basically, your, sculpture, your uh, sculpt will become muddy. Because it is very hard to keep refined form you know, as you're just adding here, let's see, I'm just putting stroke, 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 then I've got to go in and smooth and smooth isn't working very well at the higher subdivision level so I end up with a lumpy surface in here so let's undo all of that and a better approach would be to not subdivide up there but if I'm going to add form do it here and then when I smooth smooth is going to be a lot more receptive so now I can just and then I can take that up and it'll be very clean. So work with the largest polygon possible. In the same way that a painter works with the largest brush possible and then slowly goes in and uses a smaller, smaller and a smaller brush to get smaller and smaller details we are using bigger polys to smaller polys smaller smaller and smaller but right now I'm going to stay at subdivision level 4 and I'm going to see if I can get all the detail that I want there pressing alt I'm gonna smooth out some of this lumpiness Press Alt again, and then just come up around here. Smaller draw size. And what I'm doing right now, instead of going up to the draw size here, I'm just pressing S. And so S pulls up this draw size slider that lets me increase the size um, on the fly without having to move my cursor all the way up to the top. Also, one thing I really like to do when I'm sculpting in ZBrush is to turn local on. And then that means that the last point I clicked becomes the pivot point. So the chin is the pivot point now. Let me click the eye, and the eye is going to become the pivot point. 
So in general, that's a really great way uh, to work. So let's press Alt, carve in this nasolabial fold. And let's add some more volume there for our nostril. Smooth that out. Add some more. Smooth it out. And then press Alt and actually carve that in. Add some volume in here. And we can continue to work our model uh, from this point forward. Now, let's take a look at uh, working this brow section up here at the top. Smooth that out. Smooth that out. And one of the problems I'm going to have with just these tools that I've introduced you to is I'm going to have to use a very small draw size. Then I'm going to have to press uh, shift and smooth things out and then add uh, volume to both sides to uh, try to get this tight compressed wrinkle here. And it's going to be difficult. So let me introduce you to a few other tools that will make that process uh, a little bit easier. One of them is the pinch brush. So if we go to the brush palette here, and then since it's alphabetical, we go to pinch right here. We can turn frame on to show you what it's doing, but lower our draw size, and let's just show you right up here. See how it pulls all of the polygons together? If I turn frame off, you can see it creates a really crisp line right there. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to do that here. But what I really want this to do is I really want this to push inwards. So I want to um, pinch and then also push uh, inwards. So let's introduce ourselves to one important aspect uh, of the brush uh, palette, and uh, that is brush uh, mod. So let's increase that from uh, 20 to 100, see what that does. And see how as I build surface, uh, as I pinch, it actually pushes the surface up. Now if I set brush, brush mod to a negative 100, it's going to push in. So the brush mod slider Let's send it over to the tray. We're going to drag it over here to the left. The brush mod slider is acting as though it's an elevation. If it's at 100, it'll push out. If it's at a negative 100, it'll push in. So let's undo that on the model. And I'm going to actually set it to 100, but press Alt. And that way it's going to push in. And that can give me some nice compression and help me uh, really kind of get nice crisp hard edges. If I'm doing a, a toony kind of character, let's just start to suggest this uh, upper eyelid in there a little bit better. Again, I am always, always smoothing even if I have to redraw the strokes. Spending some time to really turn that in. And the nasal labial fold is where it's going to be very useful uh, as well. So let's smooth that out. and push that in. Now this is pretty useful and it's pretty cool um, but I actually like to use it a slight bit uh, differently and that is in combination with the standard brush. So let's go back to the standard brush and the standard brush uses the brush mod slider in a really cool way too.
By default it's set to zero, which means that as you sculpt, just as normal standard brush behavior. Now if I set this to 100, then as I sculpt, it's going to pinch all of that geometry in. So let's set that a little bit lower. See how it's pinching? It's pulling the geometry in, and that helps create a really refined edge right there. It's better than if this pinch was used just by itself. Now, set it to negative, and it actually will use uh, what's called the magnify brush, which we will get into. But the magnify brush has a tendency to mushroom out uh, the surface. Great for building up uh, mass and, and uh, muscles. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, negative uh, 30, or sorry, positive 30. And let's give ourselves some more sculpting room. And start to use this as kind of a knife tool. It's really good for getting in and just really creating some strong planes to our sculpt. Now, these lips really need more geometry to get better refined form. Um, so notice how I use it to really create uh, shapes too. So I'm pressing in. Okay, really helps me distinguish one shape from another shape. Don't want to do anything else with that along these lines. Smooth that out, try to get the shape of an eyeball in there. I'll spend more time on that uh, later on. All right, and maybe we divide the model one more time. Notice how it's giving me an error message now. Uh, this error message basically says that I have to go to the highest subdivision level to add one, um, and so I don't. I just want to be at the fifth subdivision level, so I'll just set it there. And you can check your active points here at the top of the shelf. So so far I have about four hundred thousand. Uh, polygons, uh, which is a good amount for roughing in a face, but you can see, you know, it's still faceted. If we were going to pour level detail, uh, this wouldn't cut it. We would need to really push this uh, quite a bit more, um, especially when we get in and we start looking at the ears. Then the ears are going to show us that, you know, we really, really, really have to uh, push these things to get it going a little bit more, unless we are to edge loop the ears. Uh, and all that. But in this case, um, I'm trying to focus on sculpting topology in very basic shape, not edge loops. Uh, I want to avoid those as much as possible for just this sculpting phase um, because it helps with my sculpting to have very evenly distributed uh, polygons. Helps an enormous amount. I'm going to go down a subdivision level to smooth this out a little better. I wasn't getting the control I wanted. Okay, we can refine that later. I just like to put in little notes as I'm traveling around the surface trying to understand uh, my model. Now, uh, this upper lip looks a little odd to me, so just going to shift smooth that whole thing out. And then move Just get that a little bit better. Now also, I want to get the nodule at the side of the mouth. So I'm in the move brush, holding Alt down, and uh, it's a nice little way to inflate the surface. Might see if I want to pull this forward at all. Look at it from all sides and make sure that I got a sense of teeth in there. But this isn't a realistic character, so. I 
don't have to sweat that too much. And we can continue to work with it and refine it from there, but uh, I'm not happy with what I just did, so we're going to undo all of that. There we go. I lost that volume that I really liked. But I get the sense that that upper lip is just too much of the shelf. And that lower lip is too big. And we can continue to refine and play with this and adjust it from there. The cool thing is, is that uh, you can get in there and be adjusting and refining the shape of this, you know, as much as you want for as long as possible. Zoom out, check your proportions, and work with it from there. But that is a basic introduction to the sculpting tools inside of um, inside of ZBrush.